The robot you're about to see is one of two successful self-clipping robots that I've seen all season. But the high basket. <laughs> ROC. Oh, they're pulling up high chamber from inside the submersible. A knob with a right angle arm. That's five. One of the most powerful skills in robotics isn't inventing something from scratch, but instead taking a proven winning design and making it your own. I see so many teams trying to reinvent the wheel each season. This team's self-clipping robot is a great example in reverse engineering. If you want to see a tangible example of how to take inspiration from top of your robot and apply these principles to your own designs for a massive bit of edge, you need to take a look at this robot. I'm Coach Pratt, and as a coach to national champion FTC teams, I want to be very clear on this next point. Simply copying a design and passing it off as your own isn't what FIRST is about. The goal is to develop your skills as an engineer. But understanding why a design works and giving credit to the original creators and then using your own skills to iterate and improve upon it, that is the hallmark of a great team. As an old mentor used to tell me, steal from the best and invent the rest. Today, I'm introducing you to team 16407 ROC from Canada. Fresh off their semifinals placement at the first place design award here at the European Premier event for the 2024-2025 into the deep season. We're about to break down how they took that world champion clipbot design from 11260 Upper Creek robot and made it their own. This is one of two robots I've seen doing this all season, and we'll take a look at the modifications Upper Creek's bot. The horizontal intake, that dual turret gripping in claw, an integration of a limelight with a fisheye lens, and lots of other clever tweaks that they made the design fit their own approach. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC Seasons game Into the Deep. The game is played on a 3 by 3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for 8 points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points, or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. Now, let's see how this robot managed those challenges. So tell me about your general strategy for this robot. What was your goal going into the season? So uh, this season, we started off doing more samples because we found it a little bit easier and faster and more efficient. But then we developed a clip bot, which we're able to score specimens mainly right now. So showing you some of the matches where our main goal is to score from the set zone instead of scoring from the normal part as we found that much more efficient uh, with less time and actually makes us basically immune and invincible to any sort of defense. Yeah, cool. And then in the last 30 seconds, we're able to just leave the set zone and perform a level 3 hang. So when you say clip bot, you want to stand in one place, grab a sample from the submersible, yes. put a clip on it, and then put it on the chamber. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So let's talk about how you grab things from the sample then. Or sorry, grab things from the submersible. Maybe rotate it because it's a little dark here. There we go. Cool. So how does this system work? So basically, we have a clipping mechanism that is inside intake. In the past, we had an outside intake. So it would only be able to intake samples like this. But now we intake like this because this reduces clumping. Also, for our intake, we have, I think, a couple um, degrees of freedom. Yep. And this allows us to grab multiple samples um, and pan a lot. In the autonomous period, we can only, this limits us, however, in autonomous because we, we can only grab within a specific zone. Within these two zones, we cannot grab because of the length of our slides and our mechanical limitations. So we always extend past this um, to have the submersible. Our intake system is very, as you can see, inside intake. And mm -hmm. this is also really high in accuracy. However, we can also outside intake during the teleop period, which we utilize a lot. But in the teleop period, we mainly uh, do outside intake. But in autonomous, we also do inside intake. So very cool. That... Now, you when you said you can do an inside and an outside intake on that, is there a servo that changes the mechanism there, or does it? We just, just we just turn. You just turn it, and yes. it's okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay. You just grab yeah, it from the side like there. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very ah. So when it compresses in versus when it's spreading, I see now. Okay. So you bring that in, and then where do you bring that into the robot to be able to get it onto the clamp? So as Sophie mentioned, we have inside and outside intake. So in the mm -hmm. code, uh, we can differentiate between like the different types of intake the driver uses. And then based on that, we do a different handover sequence. So you mean based on the button that he pushes to be able to, uh, or she pushes to be able to grab the point? Have he touched the yeah. inside intake as well? Okay, yeah. 
So, because the angles differs based on uh, outside intake or inside intake. Yep. So we can run a different sequence yep. and we hand over directly from the intake to the outtake mm -hmm. or, or our scoring arm because that yep. allows the clipping mechanism to be isolated from the handle. Okay. I'll do it. Oh, wow. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Okay. Maybe we can rotate the robot around so we can see the, the clipping mechanism. So this is like, this is a magazine where you rest all the clips on here. So you have how many of these set up at the start of a match? Uh, so you can fit up to we, nine uh, clips. Wow. Okay. Uh, before we tried like ten. Yep. The problem was we have like a limitation for our dimensions. Mm. So we decided that to do nine as because before using ten, it was less consistent and nine was more consistent. We also thought about doing eight for our uh, handover. We we realized that it really just saves us like only a little bit of speed and want to differentiate from nine. So we stuck with this design. Well, there's also strategy related because with we, we only really need nine. There's yeah. 20 clips in a match and two of those go to preloads. So if we separate the 18 into two parts, that's nine clips. Yeah, perfect. So it fits perfectly. Yeah. And before we get to the self-clamp, this rotates up and then there's also a secondary arm on there. What's the purpose of rotating this clip mechanism? Uh, when so rotating, we put the clips directly on the field wall. Yeah. So we can get them easier. The human player can just put it on. Robot drives there and we can just pick it up. You just drive in and move the whole system. Yeah, up. we drive against the okay. wall. We and what's that up. secondary clamp? So this makes sure, because uh, we custom molded this to the fit the clip shape. Yeah. Can I have a clip? And the upper part just clamps down to make sure it doesn't go out before we need to uh, get uh, one more clip for the yep. clipping. Interesting. Okay. We also have designed like uh, emergency stoppers right here. Yeah, because before we experienced an issue where like clips could easily just slip out no matter what, but because of this three D printed part, uh, it traps yep. this this specific line of the clip. Yep. So therefore, it can't like escape under like any condition. Cool. We have touch sensors equipped on our intake, our handover, and our cartridge. Um, this ensures that we can intake correctly. So in either autonomous or teleop, if it is not intake correctly, we cannot perform handover. This saves a lot of time. Same thing for handover. If the intake is intake at a weird angle, and then we put it in handover and it's wrong. We yep. also do not accept handover and it also resets. So okay. we don't go into clip retrieval. Same thing for clip retrieval, right? If one of our clips misses, um, we can't perform handover. So how does the actual clip work? Looks like you've got a rack down here. How does that get onto this vessel? So we have a gear powered slide. Yep. The servo is on the gear. And then as the gear moves, the slide moves. Okay, okay. so you got a little rack and pinion system setting up there. Yeah. According yep. to the, the holder. So, okay. yeah. As you can see, this finger looking mechanism uh, is made to fit the, the holes inside the clip. Mm -hmm. And there's also a flat part, which is passively spring powered. So it acts like a one way door. When we get one of the clips from the, yep. from the clip holder, uh, it compresses against the other stack. Yep. So that the clip gets just lodged in there, and then yep. we can take one out at a time. Now, if you didn't have that emergency stop in there, it obviously would just pull it just fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as our outtake is holding onto the set, yeah. um, we just lodge it inside this compartment. And it's uh, this compartment is also limits the sample, so it doesn't mm. slip out. And then the this tilt mechanism here. just clips it on. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Afterward, we just move up. Yeah. yeah. When it moves up, we have two buttons to the drivers. One to uh, score from the uh, far side, like a regular uh, specimen, and another to score directly from the uh, sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, typically during teleot, like around like probably one minute and 30, like before ending, we primarily score like this to save time rather than moving to the the bar side. But then like eventually maybe like around 40 seconds left of the match or 35 to 35 seconds, we switch to this type. As this won't like give us any like unnecessary penalties that we. Mm. Another detail is that uh, usually when teams think of doing like a mechanism like this, we try to we try to save moves in time, but we can't really add a linear mechanism here to actually score the samples onto the bar. So we decided on a minor small design change, putting the wheels like ninety degrees to the chassis. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. This also fits the overall shape. It's rectangular, so it also gives the intake more reach. It also gives us more pushing power because we need that to push uh, uh, maybe against another sample robot. Plus ambassador defense or just scoring it. Yeah. If we're playing defense on us. 
Awesome. Super slick magnets. You guys should be really proud of that. Uh, talk about your hang. How does your hang work? So we have two sets of passive claws for the hang. This allows us to go directly up to the submersible without having to extend the hang first. So that saves some time. And then as the first set of uh, passive claws latch onto the first bar, we have to use some momentum because our clipping mechanism is at the back. So that adds some, some more weight at the back and that doesn't allow us to uh, hang very efficiently. But we try to still get the 30 parts anyway. So that gives us a big lead. And we get this latch on. And then the second close pair of claws will latch on once we swing the outtake over. We'll add some extra tilt. As uh, okay, so you swing that little arm out. It gives you just enough. So you, the slot to you pick yourself up. And this goes underneath that first arm. Then uh, you bring yourself down and this clips onto the second bar. Yeah. Then you lift yourself up. You bring this out a bit. You bring that other arm out a bit. And then that gives you enough swing to get this last part up on top. Yeah. You'll notice the second pair of claws yeah, is a bit yeah, more curved yeah, no, because at the end of the map, K you have to close the cloak. K and it's more curved because if it's flat, it's just going to fall off. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, so obviously I could ask, what are you particularly proud of? You're clearly proud of your clip mechanism. What part was the most challenging part for you to get that function? For me, personally, what actually might be surprising to probably a lot of people was that actually the most challenging part was actually our camera. Because believe it or not, this is actually our third iteration of our camera. Before we used like a simple webcam, it, it wasn't like necessarily ideal as it didn't get a clear image of the samples on the field. So eventually we switched to a Limelight 3A. But the problem was with that camera, it had a less uh, field of vision as well as the exposure not being the best it, it can, uh, which eventually, like, we tested, like, with, like, places with, like, high shadows. So the camera couldn't, like, recognize any part of the field. But eventually, we settled with a fisheye design. This gives us a 120-degree uh, field of vision as well. And it, what it does is it basically it detects a long and short line. And it's easy to, like, it, that's how it determines the shape of a sample. Very cool. Um, we also run some visual filtrations on our camera system. This helps us detect the samples correctly. Um, and we have matrix-based sample localization. Awesome. Super slick design, guys. You should Thanks, be really man. proud of this. And thank you for sharing.